this will, this will be the thumbnail. Oh! It's probably one of the videos where you won't see like a giant smile on my face all the way through. Oh my gosh, holy no, shit! No, no, no. Wow, King of the Road style. There's no place to run. I think my umbrella just hit that poor guy in the head. It smells so incredibly bad. Uh, a beat-down Chevy or do you want a cow? My heart breaks for the people here. Six G's, yo! Is the leather in the car from your cows? I've never seen anything like this in my life. A lot more respectful than a lot of United States companies. We got one more mission. So the Eid celebration is just two days away. So all around Bangladesh, you're gonna see scenes like this. We've got guys walking the giant cow uh, on its on its way to the promised land, essentially, and on its way to the dinner table. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, and you can you can tell he doesn't want to go. He or she doesn't want to go. They know what's coming. But you ain't seen nothing yet. My new friends have promised me we're gonna about to go somewhere really, really cool, and we're gonna go somewhere where we're gonna see a lot of cows. Apparently, we're going to a cow market. We're going to the cow market yeah. now? Agro. 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 agro, agro farm? Yeah, yeah, agro farm. We're driving through the industrial area of Chittagong right now, and look at this. I don't know how well it's gonna pick up on the camera, but there's this giant steel mill, uh, like a half a kilometer back, and the air, it smells so bad. It's so smoky. It's so like, I, I, don't, I can't even describe it. Like, it's, it's like a, a chemical fog. Are we getting out? Oh God, I guess we're getting out in, into the fog. Holy This is nuts. It smells so incredibly bad. I, I feel like I should really have a mask on out here. Oh my, my God. And these people are exposed to these conditions every single day. And dear God, we're walking towards it. I'm also smelling like a ton of cow manure as well. Like there's nothing even to joke about this. I can't believe people are inhaling this on a daily basis. Like. It looks like there was a fire or something. The air is so, so polluted. This is, this is scary. This is uh, alarming. This is beyond depressing. So it's like this every single day? This, yes, this yes. chemical? Yes. Wow. And people live here. People, people live yes. right next to the you steel mill. Here. Leave here. I, I'm, I'm just in a state of shock right now. I mean, look at it, guys. It looks, it, it doesn't look real. It looks like there was a fire and the air is covered in smoke. But the smell, it's just like a chemical, metallic type of smell. I don't know what goes on in a steel mill, but dear God. All right, we have reached our destination though. We are at the Asian Agro. They promise quality. I'm, I, straight up between, between you and I, like, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time in these, in these conditions. This is, this is awful. Assalamu alaikum, brother. This is, this is, this is crazy, guys. This level of pollution, I knew the pollution was bad in, in Bangladesh, but I've, I've never seen pollution like that, like so thick, alarming. I don't even know what to say. Mawa, can you tell us where we're going right now? Um, not the steel mill, though. We're not going to the steel mill, right? We are visiting agro. Agro. It's called Asian agro. Asian Asia. agro? Asia. And Asia. what happens at the Asian agro? Just want to see okay. Kurbani Guru. Let's go, let's go. Okay, and so uh, Eid Murbarak to all my Muslim followers out there. Eid is in two days, so the city is actually starting to get a little quieter. And we are here. This is They're sold out? Sold out. They're sold out. There, there's no cows left. Right? Well, there's a few cows. Yes. But okay. most of the cows have been sold? Okay. Wow, this is this is beyond fascinating. Wow. So we've only got some like small cows left. Oh, these ones are already sold. So these these cows are already claimed. And these uh, these guys are on. Oh my gosh! Holy shit! Oh. Wow. That was a close call. That was like a straight up runaway cow. Cowabunga. I get it. If I was the cow, I'd be trying to run away too. I'd be trying to get the heck out of here. You dig? Wow! Look at the size of that animal. Just massive, massive. Oh, he like twitched when he touched him. Oh, I have, I don't know if I've ever been up close to an animal this big. Do, do you think he likes that? I don't know. I'm not gonna touch the cow. They don't need me touching them. They got, they got bad enough times coming. I don't want to get kicked or anything. I've never been to an area like this. This is nuts. As you can imagine, it doesn't smell the greatest in here, but that's, that's just part of farm life. Uh, I'm curious, my friends, where? <laughs> They're, they're wandering off. I think they're already tired of me. Oh, this this poor guy. Poor girl. Uh, I'm a big animal lover. 
Um, so not my favorite place to be, but I do think it's important to be respectful of other cultures and learn about other cultures, even if it makes you uncomfortable. And so uh, here we are. So we've got, this, just, this one's a monster. This one's a little bit smaller. And then we've got the black one over here. I don't know much about cows. I didn't stutter, study cow, stutter, because they have udders. I didn't study cowology in school. I missed that class. So I don't know what makes some white and what makes some brown. I, I kind of want to touch them, but I also don't want to touch them for a variety of reasons. And this is just their life. I, I don't understand why they're not just laying down. I figure there's a few laying down. You would think they would like want to relax, but maybe they're so concerned about what's going to happen. Is it okay to touch? Is it okay to touch? Yeah. yeah? Oh. Sorry, buddy. How much would it cost to buy one of these cows? It's like two lakhs. Two lakhs. Two lakhs, three lakhs. Yeah. Is that two thousand? Two to ten, ten lakhs. What is a lakh, though? For those that don't know, uh, how much is a lakh? In, lakh. Uh, in dollars? Yeah. One thousand dollars. One thousand dollars. So it cost almost two thousand dollars to buy a cow. That's like the co my first car cost a lakh back in the United States. Wow, what do you want? A, a beat down Chevy or do you want a cow? Tough choice. Oh, unreal. Uh, the, the, so the cows, they have a very like, oh, he's, he's itching himself now. I don't want to go in and, and, and pet, but they've got like, the hair is like very coarse. It's like very, very, um, it's not, it's a, not the softest. It's kind of like a rug. Like a carpet you would find uh, in, in a factory or something. Like the kind of carpet you would wipe your feet off of if you were to enter um, someone's house. So all these are sold yeah. and they're just waiting to go. Wow. There's a massive one over there with that big hump on his back. Why are, why are some cows white and some are black? Salam Alaikum. Salam. Oh my God. Look at this monster. That is the biggest cow I've ever seen in my life. That doesn't even look real. That is, that is like the Godzilla of cows. That is, that is Cowzilla. Look at this thing. That's the size of a car, bro. That is, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to get too close to it. $6,000 for that cow. Six G's, yo. Six racks for the cow. Funny they call it lax, and then in the States, in hip hop culture, we would call it like racks. Wow. Oh my God, a $6,000 cow. That is, that is insane. I, I just want to, I want to swear right now because I'm in, I'm in such shock. I don't even know what to say. Look at this monster, monster animal. I don't even know what to say. That, that thing was so big. What? what? Oh, we're going to another one. Okay, so I guess we're going to another cow, cow market. If the cow's there are any bigger, I'm going to be scared. A cow like that, how do you even control a cow like that, man? That, that cow would run, run me right over, like dead on arrival. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Salam. Hi, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Wow. Okay, bye, bye little cow buddies. Sorry, sorry to stand this way, but it's a celebration and, uh, and people need to eat. So bye bye for now, cow. Wow, insane. Everything about this just, 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 just crazy. It's probably one of the videos where you won't see like a giant smile on my face all the way through, you know. Number one, so concerned about the like the level of pollution out here. Like it is this chemical haze. You can like feel it. I don't even want to take a take a breath. How about those cows? If I was those cows after breathing this all day, I'd be I'd be ready for the guillotine. And then if the pollution from the factory wasn't enough, you've got all these massive trucks just shooting off exhaust into the air. My heart breaks for the people here that have to be exposed to this pollution on a, on, a, on a daily basis. I can literally feel my mouth getting drier. It's like it's getting corroded with whatever particulates are, are in the air. Very disturbing, everybody. Very, very disturbing. So we only walked for maybe five minutes, and now we're at a place called Chowdhury Ranch, a subsidiary of the Chowdhury Group. I guess I was so surprised. It's so loud. Uh, I guess I was so surprised that these cow markets are actually in the city. I figured they would all be on like the outskirts. Oh my gosh. This one looks a lot bigger. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, look at the size of these cows here. 
I don't know if we're gonna see or find anything bigger than big old Bessie from back there, but some of these cows are gonna give them a run for their money. Wow. And so are these cows normally, they live in the countryside, right? And they're just being brought here because it's Eid. Because uh, obviously bring the product to the people and not everyone has time to go to the countryside to transport a cow back. Oh wow. Let's, let's avoid that muddy water. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Salam alaikum. Wow. Okay, well, we gotta find a shoe, shoe shiner after this. Look at this, look at the horns on this one. Just a massive steer. I think cows are also called steers. Again, didn't study farmology. Played a little Farmville, but didn't really know much about uh, farm life out here. So here we've got mostly like these black and brown cows, and it looks like maybe they're piling up some feed there to feed the cows to, I guess, fatten them up one more time before all of it, uh, all of this comes to an end. This is never, never in my life have I seen anything like this. I've been to some farms, but I've never seen so much livestock just lined up, getting ready to, uh, getting ready to meet the end, you know? This is crazy. Wow. Thank you so much for bringing me here. Oh, okay, can we go talk to him? I guess, I guess we're gonna go meet with the owner here. The king, king cow of the, uh, of the place. Wow. Oh, assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Abnar Ki? Abnar Rashid. Abnar Nam Brand. Nice to meet you, Rashid. Nice to meet you too. You are the owner of Chaldari yes, Ranch. I am, yes. Wow. So, so I'm, 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 <laughs> this is my first time oh, wow. uh, being in uh, a country like this for Eid and my first time yeah. being at a, at a cow farm. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about how the process works here with buying the cows and, and how long the cows are here and sold and the prices and... Okay, so uh, for us what we do is um, we basically bring in the cows from different districts, right? Okay. Uh, of Bangladesh. And then from there we, um, we nurture them until they, you know, we bring them, we, we try and make sure we get them when they're very small. Okay, small. In terms of age. And then from there um, we feed them. Uh, we feed them until they grow. And this festive is, um, is mostly to do with the, the teeth of the cow, so it needs to be of age. So when the cows of age, we just basically we nurture them and we bring them here to our display center. Our main farm is in Hadazari, um, in a different place. So that's where we nurture them. And from there, we basically bring them here just to show people and people, they come here and they buy it, you know, in, in accordance with their preference. Wow, how far away is the main farm? Okay, so the main farm is, I think it just it should be around 30 minutes from here. 30 minutes away, okay, so not, so not too far. Yeah, I've got so, horses, I've got goats, I've got many things there. Like. You, you've got it all, yeah. okay. But for Eid, cow is the main meal oh, that is eaten. Yeah, for sure. Nobody, nobody's eating fish on Eid. No, they're, 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 <laughs> they're always eating beef, they're always eating beef. cows. Yeah. What is the difference between the white cows and the brown cows and the black so, cows? Um, these ones, you can find them in Bangladesh. You can collect them from Bangladesh, but these ones, uh, the white ones, you actually get them from India. No way! So, yeah, from our neighboring country. So the white cows come from India, yep. and then the brown and the black cows are here from yep. Bangladesh. Yep. Yep. I had no idea, okay. And with these ones, obviously, there's, I think, um, in terms of meat, I think you get most out of these ones, whereas you get a um, smaller percentage from these ones. If you go closer to these ones, you'll understand, uh, you know, how tall they are. Sure, yeah. Let's, let's get a little closer here. So the white ones have more meat and they, they sound a little better than, than the brown ones from, from Bangladesh. Interesting. Wow. Look at that monster. That's so big. Yeah, let's look at the factory for sure. Can't say no. Definitely want to check out the factory. Oh, wow. Rolling in style. Oh my gosh. Land, land, land Rover, Range Rover style. That's a little bit different than them Tuk Tuks and them CNGs and those rickshaws we were taking. Riding in the range, row the wow, okay, boy, <laughs> cow's big business, big money, you dig? Oh my gosh, wow, beautiful car, man. Reds, could you uh, could you take my backpack in there? Wow, plush red leather seats, man, wow. Is is the is the leather in the car from your cows? I got no, <laughs> I wish they were. <laughs> Unreal. Oh my God, he turned on the massage seats. I've never felt anything like this in a car. Oh my gosh. I have I had no desire to ever own a nice car and, until today. Now I, he's on the phone, so I'm trying to whisper. But oh my gosh, the 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 chair is doing like ooh, now it's getting my shoulder. Oh, now it's getting my lower back. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Wow. This is like true, true luxury, y'all. Oh my gosh.
unreal. Very, very comfortable seats. Un unbelievable. <laughs> if we if we could just drive around for the next three hours, that would be great. <laughs> very, very comfortable. $180,000. Hundred. Then, okay. But then in Bangladesh, what happens is because of the tax, uh, in Bangladesh, they actually cost around, um, more, should be more than $300,000 because of the tax. Oh my gosh. So he said in the United States, this car is probably 180000 but because of all the import taxes in Bangladesh, because the, the government needs their share, uh, $300,000 for this car. This is the most expensive car I've ever ridden in, in that case. My first car was 800 US dollars. <laughs> okay, you better hold So time, literally, th whoa, old oh man, and now he's flying. <laughs> wow, king of the road style. Glad we got the wide angle lens on to see this and feel like Gran Turismo or something. Unbelievable, man. And and bro, you're like you're like you're like a very young guy. Is this like a family business or did you start it, this it, business it, on your it, own? It's a family business for sure. Wow. I mean, um, our primary or I say um, our mother mother business of the parent company is actually a garments industry. Garments That's industry, okay. You oh, we're going to the garment factory. Amazing. I really really wanted to see what a garment factory is like here in Bangladesh. We are just we are just blasting. Wow, this thing's got a crazy V8 engine, super fast pickup. All right, we have arrived at the garment factory. Even though I, I could have spent all day in that car, man, we were, we were riding. So this is our first look at a Bangladeshi garment factory. And if you didn't know, Bangladesh is the third largest exporter of textiles and, and, and cl clothing goods around the world. Oh, we'll start wow. with our um, store. So this is basically where we, you know, with, with our garments industry, because we're a 100% export oriented garments industry, uh, we're allowed to bring clothes tax-free. Okay. So that's what the government gives us as an in incentive. So what the government would do is, if we've got an order, let's say from America or any country from the Euro Europe, what they do is they basically, um, you know, they um, they look at look at our PO. So when, when we've got purchase order, what we do is uh, we send it to uh, China or a different country where the fabrics are coming from, and the government would see that and they'd say, okay, this can come tax-free okay. because it's coming um, via our company to our company. So what would happen is basically these fabrics would be tax free and that's how we're actually making them in a very, you know, very cheap rate, competitive sure. rate and that's how we're sending it to America. But then they're being retailed in American stores. So what we're doing here is we're basically making everything for, you know, um, Next, Zara, Ralph One. We're basically doing all of that. We're the man behind the scenes. Uh -huh. and they're only retailing them in their own stores because they're the brands. Wow, you're making so, it and then they're putting their yeah, label so, on it know, essentially. Got, this is where the clothes are actually being. This, this is the actual, the area where it happens. <laughs> And so they're getting ready to shut down for Eid, yeah, just like right now, yeah. so, so business is, is kind of stopped. They basically put rows and rows of fabrics here, and they basically put one of the patterns. So those are called patterns. Pattern, pattern, pattern. So a garment, actually, we don't really just, you know, we don't really cut the whole thing together. What they do is basically they put a whole roll here, over and over. What they do is they put this pattern on, on top of the rolls, okay. and they cut thousands of pieces together. Ah. So this is only the front part and then you've got the back part that they cut, you've got the inseam that they cut, so they cut differently, you've got the waist that they cut. So they've got different parts that they cut separately, but they cut, cut thousands of pieces together, which then goes on to the sewing section where they're Wow, being. okay, so all the jeans you're wearing right now, the fronts were all cut at the same time, the backs were all cut at the same time, and then they become sewn together. And, and clearly this is all the denim. Very high quality, yeah, wow. Are. That you know, feels really, really nice. Wearing in America. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. These feel like my Levi's back home, man. And these must be uh, all the all the employees getting ready to go home for Eid right now. So, um, all the workers, okay. <laughs> they, this, this is the lifeblood of the clothes you're wearing. These are the hardworking people. Assalamu alaikum. These are the hardworking people that are making your garments you're wearing right now. Never forget about where the clothes come from and all the work it takes and, and the literal blood, sweat, and tears uh, that it takes to manufacture these fabrics and to sew them and to put them all together. Assalamu alaikum. Salam. Assalamu alaikum. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is. This is insane. Look how many people are in here. I've never seen anything like this in my life. What a, what a day of first. Look at all the jeans over here. This is outstanding. 
Wow. How, how many people do you, do you employ? So we've got, I think, around 5,000 people right now. In this factory or all, all together? All, oh, I'd say in this factory, we've got <laughs> close to 5,000. 5,000 people working in this factory. I'm, I can't believe it. Wow. So many people in here. This is incredible, brother. This is, this is an army of people. Mawa just asked me if I'm enjoying <laughs> I'm having such a good time. I, I, I can't even describe how much I've learned today and, and, and what, we, what we're all seeing here and, and witnessing. This is truly, truly remarkable, everybody. Okay, he says this is where the magic happens. Oh, no way. The last place of, you know, we're lucky that it, it's under, they're still under work. I think they're going to leave in about 30 minutes. So it, it's also almost time for them to go home as well sure. because we're shutting down for eat. Quitting time is very close. Yep. So you see what they're doing is they're doing their final check on the clothes and then they're basically packing them for them to be finished in polys and then from there they're put into cartons and they're basically being shipped to America where they're destined. Final inspection, they do the folding, they do the shading, whatever shading is and then they get shipped to America. Oh wow steam pressing ironing everything over here i think i have these pants wow and, and they're so so high quality like this is this is as fresh as clothing gets this is as new as it gets so we're not allowed to show the labels but ah they... okay i'll block that out everyone has like very nice smiles on their face um the conditions of the workers look, look very good in here like it's very well ventilated area it's very well lit I think when people think about garment factories, maybe they have not so positive images of that. Uh, but this looks like a great environment. The people have really wide smiles on their face. They, they seem happy. They're responding positive to me. Make sure, you know, we try and, you know, for, for us, the workers are our family. So ah. We keep them closely bonded. And what we do is we, we do different stuff for them. Like um, I would physically be going with the floor workers to different places like a beach once in a year just to have fun with them. So we really take them close just, we treat them as our families basically and with the compliance we try and make sure we run the factory in accordance to compliance like we've got our water treatment plan going on we've got our fire hydrant system we've got the you know the different certificates that we need to make sure this factory building is safe enough for the workers to work i think we'd say um, overall our factory is a 100 percent compliant factory and we're trying to make sure that we you know get we always we always trying to make sure that we get it all the way up to the mark so that our family here that are working that are you know working very hard for us we try and make sure that this building this whole entire um, the system and the environment is safe for them that's all that's that, that's outstanding that's a, certainly a lot more respectful than a lot of united states companies uh that, that that treat their workers more like the cows we saw back at the the farm so tremendous thanks to you for doing great work and mm -hmm. and for supporting and treating treating your workers like family that's that's very noble and uh I feel like that's very, um, it, it seems very in correlation with Islamic culture of yep, taking care of one another and definitely. looking at each other, uh, treating everybody like their family. So mm -hmm. bravo to you, man. Bravo to you. Congratulations on, on all your success as well. This has been an eye-opening experience to say the least, guys. So here are the embroidery machines and uh, he tells me that just one set of these would cost $150,000. Uh -huh. So about half of that Range Rover. <laughs> Oh uh, wow, look how like detailed and intricate these look. Major shout out to the engineers who came up with this stuff. Wow, unbelievable. Oh, and then here is our model friend. Here is the prettiest girl in Bangladesh showing off in front of the, the stitching machines. Very, very nice. Here, we'll get up close. This will, this will be the thumbnail. Oh, whoa. Hello, I don't know, Ooh, yeah, whoa. Camera off. All right, because it's Eid and it's like five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, finding a CNG is rather impossible. Uh, many people have either gone home to spend the time with their family or they're just traveling. Uh, and so all the, like, the CNGs are full. So we had to take a rickshaw. Mawa is in the rickshaw up ahead. And now unfortunately we have to drive through this chemical haze one more time. Uh, but maybe now you can see it a little bit better. Like I don't even want to breathe through this, through this crap, y'all. This is so bad. You really have to take a second to imagine yourself if, if you were like a rickshaw driver here, driving, breathing in this air every single day. The effect it would have on your lungs, on your body, on your life expectancy. It's all very troubling and very, very sad to think about, but uh, a tragic, harsh reality here. Uh, and 
Many of the people here do not have a choice. There's no place to escape the pollution. There's no place to run from the toxicity. They are stuck. Okay, Mawa, what kind of tea are we about to have? Male cha. Male, male cha. Yeah. And that's the male cha right there? Wow, that looks super good and super, super creamy. We gotta go find out what ingredients are in that. Uh, my friends are very, very hot. So I'm like, I wanna sit on the roof. They just looked at me like I was crazy. All right, we're on a rooftop and the music just started, so I gotta hurry up and take a sip of the cha. And that's that. It was so loud in there, it was like the club. They were blasting music, um, but the cha was really good. Super sweet, really creamy, uh, very, very sugary. Mawa, I wanna thank you so much for such a special day. Hopefully we will see you again uh, in some other videos, but thank you for everything you did. It was so nice meeting you. A la fizz, we'll see you. Ciao for now. But my man Fahim in here, we got one more mission. Because my backpack has a rip in it. Thanks, North Face. Not. So he's going to take me some more where we can uh, hopefully get the bag fixed up. We're going to see what it costs to get a bag fixed up here uh, in Bangladesh. All right, my man Fahim brought me to a straight alley. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? Got this, got this hole right here. Hey, hey, hey. Take the umbrella. Thank you. Yes, video, no, we don't want to get uh, wet. Up, up in our Nam key. Oh, it's starting, starting to really rain. So my man has uh, his own little shop here. Oh, and he's what's he gonna do in here? He's maybe putting up an, um, his own umbrella. Oh yeah, I think he's putting that up so he can cover all of his stuff. It looks like he's. I need to see what we're doing here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, brother. Okay. So my man is gonna get under here and work on the bag. And uh, I'm right over here, wow. Some crazy like smoke out is coming this way from God knows where. We've already inhaled enough chemicals today and, and poison and pollution. I can't, I can't take any more. All right, we're gonna watch what uh, my man's doing here. I think I'm gonna have to like duck down right with him. Oh, gosh, don't wanna get run over by this car here. Man, this is uh, getting deep with it. All right, so he's unzipping the bag and he's taking a look at the hole. Don't about brother, don't about. And he just like, uh, he just took like some little knife. Oh God. Yeah, well, this is like the craziest alley ever. The, the car just, the car just hit the freaking umbrella. Okay, try to get in there and see what he's doing. Not the best lighting, unfortunately. So he's, uh, looks like he's putting uh, like a metal, Players or something through there, and I think he's already pulled out some twine. Oh my god. Just the most chaotic, chaotic bag fixing video ever. Location. Wow. My man was a G here from Fahim, like knew right where to go to find this guy. Not a lot of feedback. I'm trying to. Thank you, brother. Don't know about. I'm very, very curious to see what it looks like. Uh, the finished product here. So it looks like he's putting that string through there. And he's using this kind of like sharpened metal tool. I'm sure there's like proper names for these tools, but I, I got I got no idea what they're called. I, I did not take uh, the stitching class or anything like that. But this is a North Face bag. I've only had it for less than two years, and I can't believe it's already got a hole in it. Like I had a North Face bag for like three years prior, and that that went through way more, and that had no issues. Uh, looks like he's got. All sorts of like uh, stuff to like clean your shoes and, and do stuff here. Man, okay, now he's snipping the twine. And we're, we're definitely, we're getting like a crowd of people around us. We've got some like beggars to the left of me just, just hovering. And uh, my man holding the umbrella here. Could not be, could, could, could not be like worse conditions. Ah, don't know about it. All right, let's see what we got. Wow, like as good as new, like you can't even tell there was a hole there. Wow. That's amazing. Really nice. Huh? That looks good, huh? Mm. Wow. Really, really Take nice it. job. Take it. Oh my gosh. Wow, wow. And uh, Kochi Taco? Are you paying? No, 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 no. no, no, no please. No, no. Are you sure? No problem. Oh my gosh. Dude, the, the kindness of Fahim, the kindness of everybody here. They won't let, they won't let me pay for a thing. Ooh, oh, brother, no. you're too nice. Oh. And that was about well, 20? Let's go. 20 taco? 50 taco. 50 taco, wow, so like 50 cents. As I was saying, if you were to get that fixed in the United States, that would have been like 15, 20, 30 dollars. If I would have sent it to the North Face, they would have probably taken like three months to get it back to me after fixing it. So, yo, Bangladesh quality, way better than the North Face. You can, you can take that to the bank. But that's that, everybody. Oh, what an incredible day. I want to thank Mawa and Fahim uh, for their... 
don't want to get my umbrella caught on one of these like electrical wires. Um, major shout out to Mawa and Fahim for everything they did, um, for taking me to the garment factory, for taking me uh, to the agro uh, cow farm. That was crazy. Uh, hopefully this video was as educational and as exciting as it was for me. Uh, this is definitely one of my most memorable days in Bangladesh, uh, thanks to these people. Um, major shout out to them. Cannot thank these two enough for their hospitality. My name's Brent Tim from Chittagong City, and I'm saying ciao for now. Stay dry, folks. <laughs>